What's going on guys? Welcome back to Project YZ450F. Today is gonna to be part two of the video series. We're not gonna be getting into anything crazy today. I know that we said we'd be doing the plastics today. I've decided not to do that only because there's some stuff underneath the plastics that I wanna take care of. So we're probably gonna do that in a later video. As for today, I want to address one of the only problems that I actually found on this bike, which is there are bad bearings in the front wheel. So we're gonna go ahead take care of that bearing. And while that wheel's off, we might as well take the back wheel off and we'll get to painting them. And while the paint's drying on those wheels, we're going to get to taking off that tank cover. Now, if you guys saw in the last video, I couldn't get this tank shrouded off because one of the bolts has the infamous spinning bolt syndrome. So there are a couple methods to getting that off. I did a little bit of research. There's nothing crazy, at least that I found, but I did find one method I've heard of it before, I've never actually tried it, but we should be able to get it to work. So we will be getting to fixing that shroud. Also, we're gonna see if we can get these fork guards off. Now I did put some penetrating oil behind the bolts to see if I could get that to soak in there. Maybe that'll help. Those aren't stripped out or spinning like the tank shroud. They're just so tight. And I put so much torque on them last time, I didn't wanna strip out the head of the bolt or snap the bolts off. So I decided to let the oil do the work. If I can't get them off, I'm most likely just gonna clean them on the bike and leave them. And last but not least, I do wanna pull the air filter off, give that a good cleaning so that it's nice and dry so that when the time comes, we'll be able to throw it on and fire this thing up. And if we're lucky, we'll get the big gun exhaust on. That shouldn't be too big of a project. I'm limited to only a couple hours right now. So hopefully we can get to that tonight, but if not, we'll take care of it in another video. Also guys, I did want to mention, I took the Banshee out for a small ride, nothing crazy. It wasn't even supposed to be a ride, but I did get it out on the trails and got the first taste of what it actually feels like. I had the jetting dialed in much better than it was before because I listened to some, some suggestions that you guys made. And man, let me tell you, this thing rips. So make sure to hop over and check out that video. It's the last video I posted. I'll put up a little tag right here. Make sure to check it out. Okay, so without further ado guys, let's get these wheels off, fix the bearing and get the wheels painted. So the whole idea behind painting these wheels is to bring up the bike to a more modern look. So as most people have noticed, as the years progressed with dirt bikes, most manufacturers switched to black wheels, especially in the 250 and 450 class, bikes were coming off the line from the factory with black wheels. It's just a more modern look. I think it looks cleaner and it's definitely gonna bring this bike back to a more modern appearance. All right, so we got our wheels off, fairly easy. Came off without a hitch, a little bit of tight bolts. Also have our chain off. If you look closely, you can see some gold coming through. So I think this thing's gonna clean up nicely. It's just a regular roller chain and I'm fine with that. All right, so let's go ahead and change out the front bearings. So I'm gonna throw down two pieces of wood, put our wheel up, we yank these seals out. Oh yeah, look how cruddy those bearings are. I can feel a little bit of play in them too. You could really feel it when it was mounted on the bike. Now we're gonna tap these bearings through. I took an extension and a socket. This is like a cheap, easy method. The socket is just barely the size of the front axle. So I'm gonna put it in and try to cock the collar in there to one side so that we can catch the inner lip of the other bearing and we'll smash it through. The collar really doesn't want to move. So there's our sleeve and our old bearing. Bearing's trash. So I'll flip this over. We'll get the other one out. And there's the other one. Oh yeah, nice and smooth. All right, so now we're gonna get to cleaning these wheels up. And today's Dirt Beatdown, once again, is brought to you by Awesome. 
This stuff is just going to annihilate the dirt as always. There's really just no chance. Now, as you can see here, guys, I'm using the Firm Bristle Blue Brush. You can get one of these bad boys at Walmart or your local auto store. You're gonna wanna make sure you're getting in all the nooks and crannies. If you do that, people are gonna notice and they're gonna be like, damn, this guy really cares about his bike. Even behind his sprocket is clean. The awesome just beats down the dirt and then we're just gonna blast it away with this water so that the dirt can trickle down into the rocks to its final resting place. Honestly, I talk so highly of awesome that I should be sponsored by them, but it only costs a dollar to buy a bottle of this stuff, so I really wouldn't be saving that much. And as some of you may have noticed, the front wheel is sitting behind the hose, and you might be wondering, is any dirt going to escape the wrath of awesome? Well, I'm going to put at ease all of the people wondering that very thing. There will be no dirt escaping this evening. But in all seriousness, guys, this is a crucial step if you want to be painting your wheels. You got to have them clean because any kind of contaminants that are on that aluminum, they're going to make the paint not bind. It might look good at first, but it's not going to hold up. So it's definitely important to be very thorough using a degreaser and scuffing up the surfaces, making sure it's nice and clean. So you might be thinking, how come I'm spraying down the back wheel when I didn't take those bearings out? You're gonna get water in there. Well, that is true, but I am gonna blow it out pretty thoroughly and hopefully get all the water out before I put the seals back in. And while we have all our cleaning stuff out, I might as well go ahead, clean up our chain, see if we can get that looking good. And I'm gonna go ahead and clean up our axles and studs. Well, there you can see it. We had a really nice DID gold chain under all that grit and grime. And it came out pretty nicely. You can see this thing still has all that nice gold finish. So that's going to look really nice on the bike. Cleaned up the axles, all our spacers, the rear studs. So that stuff will be ready for the wheels as soon as I'm done painting them. So now we're going to get these wheels prepped for paint. Really simple. We're just gonna take some steel wool. I think this is two or three grade. It's a little bit rougher. And I'm just gonna go around and scuff up the surfaces so that they'll be more uh, prone to binding to the paint, get a nice bond. And uh, then we'll go ahead, clean them up, coat our spokes. I'll show you how we do that. And then we'll paint them. Now when I'm doing this, I usually pick a spot. Like I'll take up this mark right here, or I'll take our valve stem and you just kind of plug away until you make it all the way back around that same spot so you know, you know you're not double coating or double steel wooling. It's just a method I like to use. All right, so there's the finish. I didn't go crazy with this, guys. Remember, it's a dirt bike. It will look really nice, but I didn't you know, take so much time this takes forever. It's supposed to be a quick, cheap, easy mod. And believe it or not, this will hold up. Like I said before, I'm not like crazy with riding dirt bikes. I mean, if you do some crazy cross country stuff, they're probably gonna get chipped up pretty quickly. But this isn't the first time I've done this and it usually lasts pretty well. Just gotta make sure they're really clean and you rough them up just like I did and it should bond pretty nicely. All right, so there's the finish on the front wheel. And you can see these spoke nuts get cleaned up from this, the uh, steel wool flying by it. So it does a nice job of cleaning everything up. You could use a scotch Bright too. I just think that the steel wool is a little bit easier to work with. So I'm going to wipe them down with some acetone, get the surfaces nice and prepped. Then we'll put our spoke guards on. We'll put some business cards around the outside or index cards, mask everything off, and we'll get to painting. Boom. So we got our wheel cleaning kit here. It's just a bunch of straws cut in half and index cards. McDonald's for the win. So you can see I've used these before and I have a split right down the center. And basically these just slip right over your spokes and they're gonna guard everything so that when we paint, we don't get any paint on the spokes. Now, before we get moving, I'm gonna take out our valve stem because we're gonna be taking index cards and going around 
the exterior of the rim or the perimeter of the rim. And if we deflate the tire, it's going to be much easier to tuck those cards in behind the rim and between the tire. Okay, so these spokes are all covered. You can see that there's a little bit exposed at the bottom. That's because the Excel spoke nuts are a little bit bigger, but that's no problem. We'll put a little bit piece of masking tape on them, and we're also going to mask off this and our valve stem just so everything looks real nice. And then we can go ahead and put our index cards around the outside, and this wheel will be done. So this wheel is entirely ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other one. The hard part is done, painting them's easy. So let's get it done. All right, so I got the wheels all masked off. We're gonna take some self-etching primer. And I'm trying to do this quick because it's pretty windy out. I think it's about to rain. So we'll see if we can get these done without making a mess. All right, I think those wheels are gonna turn out awesome. But while we're waiting for the paint to dry, I wanna see if we can get out this stuck tank bolt. So the spinning tank bolt is a notorious problem, specifically with dirt bikes. It's not the first time I've run into this. And a lot of you guys probably had the same issue. Now I did a little bit of research. I've tried a couple methods in the past. Um, I did put some uh, PB Blaster on this in the last video, if you guys saw that. Now it's been about a week and I put it on there a couple times. So it's had some time to set in, but if the, bro if the bolt breaks free from that, it's not really solving the problem because that nut starts still going to spin inside the tank. So the method that I'd like to use is, it, it's, I mean, some people call it the burnout method, I've heard, um, the melting method. You can call it whatever you want. And essentially what you do is you, you get a, um, an impact on here or a drill and you spin the drill with the nut cert just until it gets hot enough from friction and then you pull the entire nut cert out and then you can get a vice grip on the nut cert and back out the bolt. Now, after that, you can't screw anything into the tank, but you can take that nut cert and JB weld it back into the tank and then that should be a permanent fix. All right, so this is the culprit right here. This bolt just does not want to come out. So while we're spinning it there, I've heard of people actually creating so much heat that they push the nut cert through the tank. Like the tank itself actually melts like the entire wall. I guess it depends how thick your tank is. So we definitely don't want to do that. So to prevent that, I'm going to make sure that we're holding plenty of pressure on this fairing so that as soon as it's hot enough, it'll lift right out. So I'm going to take this screwdriver and jam it in the back so that we'll have all kinds of pressure. And uh, then we'll get to spinning. And hopefully this method works. I really don't feel like screwing with this much longer. I want to get those new plastics on. Okay, that's pretty tight.
Wow. That's amazing. I did not think the nut certs were that deep. I don't know if you guys can see in there. That's really deep. Wait till you actually see the nut cert. That right there is the nut cert. I mean, that thing is huge. How the hell did that get stripped out? I mean, that is beyond me. But that'll be easy to get off. We can put a wrench on that or I can put it in the vise. And we should be able to get this 8mm bolt out. And amazingly, we didn't ruin the fairing. Not that that really matters. But at least we're safe. We didn't put a hole in the tank. So I'm going to fill that hole up with JB Weld, pop this off, and then we'll smash it back in there. And hopefully that'll be a permanent fix. So we'll mix up some JB Weld here. The sad thing is that bolt really wasn't that tight. So it must have just been spinning real freely in there. All right, now I'm going to drill this hole out a little bit because this nut cert doesn't even come close to fitting in this hole. It's amazing that this came out, I guess, when it was soft and malleable. So I'm just going to drill it out a little bit. And then the rest of the way, hopefully I can smash it through. But this way, the JB weld will be around that surface and hopefully bond to the plastic. Well, not the most graceful fix, but once that JB weld hardens, that nut cert should never spin again, and it's behind the fairings, so it's something that we're never going to see. Now, the real question, can we get these fork guards off? So if you remember in the last video, these things were rock solid, like not budging at all. I'm guessing the metal has fused in the aluminum. I'm not really sure. I don't want to heat these because it'll ruin the fork guards. And I was planning on reusing them. So I've already made up my mind. I'm going to give them a couple snaps with a really big impact gun. And if I can't break them loose, I'm just going to let them be. And I'm going to clean off all this stuff and leave them as they are. And then when it comes time that I do have to take these things off, that can be something I address later. But for now, it's just I don't want to drill these things out right now. And if they're going to look perfectly fine and be functional, for now, it's just fine. So I'll give them a try with the impact gun. All right, let's see what happens here. This is a big impact gun. There's a good amount of bite in these bolts, these Allen heads. So we're just going to give it a couple snaps. I'm not going to like blast them because it'll strip these damn things right out or snap the head off. So let's see if we get lucky. Oh, look at that. The M18 comes in for the kill. Now keep in mind, these things were soaking in PB Blaster. So, oh, it's cocked in there, so we'll have to pull that off. Hopefully we can get the other ones off too. There we go, no problem. All right, so that's definitely a relief getting those bolts unstuck. Using an impact gun is definitely a little trick of mine. A lot of times if you have a stuck bolt, especially a Phillips head, you can use an impact gun. You pressure, put a lot of pressure on the back of the gun and you just snap the trigger a couple times. And a lot of times you can get those bolts unstuck, but you have to have a good feel for it. If you go too hard, you're going to strip out the threads right away. So the wheels aren't quite dry enough for me to be comfortable to put them on. So I guess that means we just have to put the slip on muffler on. That's right. It's unboxing time. It's been a while since we've had unboxing time. And it feels good. So this doesn't even need to be unboxed. We already know what this is. Big gun exhaust. So let's bust this thing open and see what it looks like. So 
Would you look at that? Wow. That looks badass. This is the first ever brand new four-stroke exhaust I've ever had. Oh man, this has scratches and stuff on it. Well, it is a dirt bike, so I guess it is what it is, but it does have some small scratches on it. However, in its entirety, this thing looks really cool. I always thought Big Gun was badass. I've never had it, though. I really like the red tips. I think that looks really cool. So, yeah, man. Take a look at this thing. That's definitely a sharp-looking muffler. And it's the Evo R series, which they're the ones that come with that red tip, which is really what I wanted. Came with a spark arrester, which probably won't be using. And of course it came with a sticker. So you can see right here. It's a little scratched up. Which I mean, normally I wouldn't really care, but like I said, this is the first brand new four-stroke exhaust I've ever bought my entire life. I've had plenty of used ones, but I never bought a new one, so uh, I don't know if that bothers me or not. There's a little bit of wear up here too. This is most likely new old stock and it's probably been like in a box kicked around and uh, moved around a bunch of times. And that's usually when little scratches and stuff like that happen. So, I mean, I don't know if I really would complain about that. I might say something to the seller, take some pictures just to let them know because other people might complain if they have a bunch of these sitting around. I don't know. It wasn't, it was a good deal. So I, I can't really complain. Well, it definitely gives the bike a unique look. It's a really long muffler. And it kind of sticks out a little bit. Like, if you get behind the bike like this, I feel like it sticks out to the side like an abnormal amount. And it almost looks like it's not going to fit. But I did put the side plastic piece on. Get that in there. And I mean, it fits. It's just, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it'll look a little bit better once all the plastics are on it and everything. I don't know. It just seems like ridiculously long <laughs> and like in your face. I mean, geez, that thing sticks out really far. <laughs> But hey, man, maybe when we put that back fender on, it'll look okay. And this might be a candidate for a chopped muffler. And we just cut it right there. I think it would look a lot better that way. But damn, man, that thing is really long. <laughs> and guys, I do know this subframe looks like it is slightly tweaked. I'm not 100% sure. But I think it's tweaked to the right side just a little bit. That's all right. I can either get a new subframe or maybe try to tweak this one back. It's kind of hard to tell, but yeah. And the last order of business is going to be cleaning up this air filter so that it's all nice and dry come riding time. All right, well, that filter was so dirty. I just decided I'm going to get a new filter. But anyways, those wheels are pretty dry. Check out how these things turned out. These things came out awesome. They're definitely gonna change the dynamic of the bike. They're not perfect, but they did come out really good. There's some paper stuck behind. That's from the index cards. I don't like to rip that stuff out or dig it out until the paint's completely cured. So for now, we'll just leave it like that. But these things really came out nice.
And now that our paint's all cured, let's put these new bearings in. Oh yeah, man. This thing is looking awesome. So much better than it did before. The black rims with the gold chain. Really good look in my opinion. When we have those yellow plastics on there, man, it's going to look sweet. And the pipe is looking a little bit better now that the back tire is on there. It really looked gigantic without the tires. I mean, it's still a big pipe, there's no doubt. But you can see with the whole profile of the bike, it doesn't actually look quite as out of proportion as it did. Because I was actually getting a little bit worried there that it might look kind of silly. <laughs> but yeah, man, it's coming together. It looks good. All right, guys, so we got a good amount of stuff done on this bike today. I mean, between getting off those stuck bolts, fixing the tank, painting the wheels, putting that exhaust on, taking the air filter off, I think we did a lot of progress, and uh, I'm really happy with the way this thing's turning out. So I'm going to go ahead and order a new air filter for this thing. It definitely needed it. I didn't tighten down all of our bolts for our wheels and everything. I want to make sure everything's lined up, get the chain all lined up and all that stuff. That's probably one of the things I'm going to do later on or at least in the next video. And we'll probably be getting the plastics on in the next video. And that's when we're really going to get to see what this thing is going to look like. And that's pretty much it for this bike. It's not going to be a crazy build. We're also going to do grips, levers, just really basic stuff like that. And of course, guys, you can't forget graphics. That's really going to separate this bike from the pack. Also, guys, remember to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. It helps me out a lot. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you like all these modifications that I'm doing to this bike. If you think I should have left the wheels silver, maybe painted them a different color, let me know in the comments below. Also, remember to check me out on Instagram. It's michaelsabo350. On that page, I do like to post updates about what's going on in the shop. So if my videos are lagging, you can usually hop over to my Instagram and see what's going on. But until the next video, guys, have a good week.